Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shining Light Video Podcast Show, where I shine a light on my guest and the positivity they're spreading in their communities. I'm Michael Esposito, the host of the show and an insurance agent specializing in commercial insurance. I'll introduce my guest in just a moment, but first, I would like to thank some of my show's sponsors. I'd like to thank the Mindful Living Coaching Program done by Coach Matt Alfonso. Coach Matt Alfonso helps you gain clarity and be able to find your true purpose in life. You can message Matt Alfonso on Instagram at MattAlfonso1, that's at MattAlfonso and the number one, to f learn more about the Mindful Living Coaching Program. I'm also enrolled in that program and it's a really great program helping me gain some clarity in my life. I'd also like to thank HV Gold Rewards, who is also a show sponsor and helps promote local businesses. You can visit hvgoldrewards.com to buy your $10 discount card, enter promo code FCH, and HV Gold Rewards will donate $8 towards Forgotten Turn of Hades fundraisers. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome and bring in my guest. I'll bring her in now. I see she's here, so just give me one second. And we're going to be bringing her. It takes about a second or so for it to connect. And there we are. Hey, hey Sue, how are you? How are you? Doing good, thanks. Really excited thanks. to have you on. You're kicking off my very first show in July, so this is really, really cool. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I was really looking forward to this today. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me give you a proper introduction. Okay. So, hello everyone, and welcome to the Shining Light Video Podcast Show, where I shine a light on my guests and the positivity they're spreading in their communities. I'm Michael Esposito, the host of the show and an insurance agent specializing in commercial insurance. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible, by Audrey Hepburn. What have you done in your life that you thought was impossible? Let us know in the comments. My guest today has proved that nothing is impossible. From her humble beginnings as a single mom and a business owner to a state senator, she proved that if you follow your intuition, you can do anything. She's Senator Sue Serino, and she'll share how her determination and passion for positive change in her community drove her into the New York State Senate. Welcome, Sue. Thank you, Michael, and thanks again for having me. You know, they call me the accidental senator. Because <laughs> I was somebody, as you know, I've told you before, I hated politics, and a lot of people can say I still do. Uh, but I got involved because of my business in Hyde Park, where I moved my real estate company. And I took this old, old building and made it absolutely beautiful and went to the town and they said, okay, well, we only meet once a month and you've got to do this, this, and this. And I was so frustrated. So I thought I had all my ducks in a row. And everybody from the same party, female, and I'm against them. Okay, there we are. Hey, oh. Sue, I, I lost you uh, right when you were talking about going to the Hyde Park Town Board and getting all your ducks in a row, and then you were met with, and then we lost you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yep, so we went to the uh, town board, and we thought we had everything ready, and they said they meet only once a month, and I was frustrated because I was ready to go. You know, as a business owner, you move forward, right, not backward. Unfortunately, government is not uh, as quick. But um, so that prompted me, people have been asking me to run and I ran, I was on the town board, uh, we were all newly elected, I was the only female, um, all the same party, and a month in they brought up a, um, a bill, and there was a lot of opposition uh, in the crowd that came to see us and I said, geez, I think we should hold off and listen to what the people had to say. And the supervisor got so mad at me that they kind of like blackballed me for the, the following 23 months, it was an unbelievable experience. <laughs> and people would have thought I would have gotten out of politics then. But I uh, went on to the legislature and, you know, still kind of voted against different bills that were, you know, my party's bills. And uh, at one point I was taken off of every committee I was on and put on fishing game. <laughs> and then the Senate asked me to run. 
And I said, wow, be careful what you wish for. So, uh, <laughs> so here I'm at. And I, I absolutely love what I do. I hate the politics, but I love helping people. And I think the biggest thing, like with COVID, I miss being out in the community, um, you know, seeing people. But we are helping people, hundreds and hundreds of people every day uh, with unemployment and small business owners. So uh, that's been, you know, so important. Yeah, and speaking about your community, I mean, that's how we met. We met at community events. I met you at Ribbon Cuttings, at the White's Marina, the Veterans Day, and at several other events. I want to take just a little bit of a step back with you, because you and I, we, we shared, you shared a very unique story with me for that of a state senator, of course. Yeah. And I'd like to take that step back, because I specifically chose this quote for you of nothing is impossible, because I really feel that way with the story you shared with me about your youth and how you progressed in life. Would you, would you mind sharing that story with us about going back to your high school days? Sure, I would love to. Uh, my parents, you know, sadly divorced when I was young. I was probably 13 or 14 years old. And uh, I started working a job to help my mom. I had two younger brothers. And I was working by the time I was in my senior year, probably 40 to 50 hours a week. And I wasn't going to gym. And I think there was a paper I didn't write. I don't remember exactly. But my mother was very disappointed because I didn't graduate. And my father was actually one of the first men to go to Vassar College uh, that was admitted to Vassar College when they opened it up to men. So they were both disappointed in me. I went right away and I didn't want to go to summer school. I took the GED test and they said, oh, this is your college level. And they said, well, you know, life gets in the way, right? You know, what are you going to do? So, um, and I was kind of like told not to tell that story my first year in Albany, which was really upsetting to me because I felt like people should hear that because if I could do it, you could too. So my next year, I started visiting the schools and spent a lot of time in the city of Poughkeepsie schools and telling students about my story and you would see like their eyes light up. Uh, and in fact, I have a really short letter that it's, so amazing, Michael, that this girl had just written to me uh, that I, uh, she, I met her in the school, but can I read it? It's really short. Please. Yes, says, please read it. Dear Senator Serino, I hope you find the time to read this, but I would like to express the impact you have had on my education during my time attending Poughkeepsie City School District. I had joined a math program that was before school hours in the morning. I was very determined to receive knowledge through the math and physics exploration program I had attended. On March 14th, 2015, I received a certificate of recognition from you that recognized my Pi Day Award and math participation while attending Poughkeepsie Middle School. Earning this reward boosted my confidence in pursuing a field involving math and science and made me strive for greater success. Although I did not have the opportunity to meet you in person, you still have made a permanent impression. All these years later, I am now looking to attend college with a major in civil engineering. I don't think I would have gone this route if it weren't for the early success I had experienced. Your ongoing fights for small businesses, seniors, Lyme disease, and especially children continue to inspire me to fight for what's right. And I'm sure other girls feel the same. Thank you for having an impact on me and all the best to you. So I spoke to Sabrina this morning because uh, we had just received the letter and we set up a time for her and I to speak and she's living on Long Island now and uh, hopefully our paths are going to cross but we're going to keep in touch. But just uh, something like this makes it all worthwhile, right? That I was able to inspire this young girl and now she's turning into an amazing young woman and she's going to pursue her uh, career. So it's very exciting. That really is. And it's, it's also kind of touching for me as well because actually my wife is a Poughkeepsie middle school teacher and she teaches math. So I have to get, when we're off, when we're off air, I'll have to get her last name and ask my, my wife about this student. But that's really, that's really wonderful to hear. And especially coming out of that district too, because I know, because my wife's a teacher there, how that district really struggles and has a lot of, a lot of hurdles to overcome. And yeah, a story like yours about getting your GED and being able to be as successful as you are is just truly amazing. And if that wasn't enough, there's still another little part to your story that we're going to share. This is the Shining Light Video Podcast show where I shine a light on my guests and the positivity they're spreading in their communities. I'm here with New York State Senator Sue Serino, and we're speaking about all the great things that she does in her community, but we're really learning about her background and learning about nothing is impossible and you can overcome all sorts of challenges. And Senator Serino decided to skip out on gym class 
and got her GED and still <laughs> made it to the New York State Senate. And included in all that, while working full time, you were also a single mom. Could you share with us the experience that you had of starting a business, being a single mom, raising a child? I mean, I have two of my own and I have my wife here helping me. I can't imagine doing it by myself. Could you share with us that experience? And then of course, we're gonna get into your Senate races. Sure. I um, married young and so sadly uh, divorced when my uh, son was probably just about a year old. So I was working three jobs at some point. So I opened a daycare, it was one of my first businesses, so I could stay home with Anthony. And uh, then I would waitress and manage a restaurant at night. And I did that for years. Uh, and it was, I knew what it was like. I think that's the most important th takeaway from this, you know, because you're always juggling, right? Robbing from Peter to pay Paul. And I always say that when I'm up in Albany, when there's a lot of it spending, you know, like you see what happens with our uh, budgets. And it's just like, how do you do this? You have to think about your districts, go back to like people who are living paycheck to paycheck. And that's why with this whole COVID thing, it really hit home for me because it took me back to the days when I lived paycheck to paycheck. And I can't even imagine with people having a delay in their unemployment so we really worked so hard to be able to make sure that they were getting their funds. And uh, we even had people calling us from out of the district because I guess we were pretty successful with helping people. Uh, but it really, uh, you know, touched my heart listening to a lot of their stories too. You know, we had grown men uh, very upset on the phone because they weren't able to provide for their families and uh, we were able to help them. So it was great. Yeah, you, yeah, you were very, very vocal about getting the ball rolling and getting back into business and back into the swing of things. I'm sure that there was a lot of pushback and I'm, I'm sure people are on one side of the fence and on the other, and, and that's not really the conversation. But what I would like to hear is more about your platform in terms of that. You, you did mention you, you, you really fought for the small businesses. Oh, and that's yeah. really what I would like to hear about because I, like I said, I've met you at Ribbon Cuttings multiple times. You're always out in the community. So could you share with us a little bit about that and, and your passion for the small businesses in your community? Sure, and you know, the one thing about being out in the community um, you're there with everyone. They, people can come up and talk to you. You know, pe people would come up to me all the time and say, oh, Senator, you see, they, they kind of stand back a little. I said, first of all, my name is Sue. I only use Senator when I need somebody to step up to the plate. I said, come on, tell me what's going on. So we've had great conversations. I've uh, Different legislation has come forward, of course, from talking to people. So it's just so important to be out in the community. And as a small business owner, I cannot imagine, you know, we all kept our promise when this first happened. It was scary. I, I was scared. Everybody was. My mom and my mother-in-law, my mom's uh, 79 and my mother-in-law is 89. So we were really afraid. In fact, we told them they were grounded because <laughs> I didn't want them coming out. We were taking care of them, but uh, we were fearful just like everybody else. But at the same time, we kept our promise to keep things closed down and we were able to get through it. But then when it went on longer and the governor was closing things down even longer, like we had practiced safety and people were looking forward to opening their businesses. And there was a lot of stuff, as you know, that didn't make a lot of sense. Like Walmart was open, right? There's hundreds and hundreds of people. I went a few times and not just in Dutchess County. I wanted to see what was happening. I went to Columbia. I went to uh, Ulster County. I wanted to see same thing going on and it was a lot of people in the store. So why couldn't like a, a mom and pop that has like a frame shop, <laughs> they're only going to have one person come in or two, why couldn't they operate? So I think going forward, there's a lot of lessons to be learned. And, and maybe we need some regional task force that um, specialize in the different areas like with business to be helpful and to take those things into consideration. Yeah, and I think, you know, based off of what you said earlier in our conversation today and even our conversations previously, where you said it's really about getting out in the community. When you, when you get out of your, your doors and get out into the community and you walk through these mom and pop shops, it's just like you said, there's one or two people there. Everybody's wearing masks. Everybody's following the protocol because they don't want to get sick either. And then, of course, you know, I, I shop at Hannaford and, and I'm sure I, I, I haven't been to Walmart, but you know, Hannaford was open and there was plenty of people there and there was some people with masks, some people without masks. But like yeah. to your point is that these smaller mom and pops, uh, unfortunately, you suffered tremendously because of this and, and you fought really hard to get them back up and running. And so I applaud you and thank you so much for your commitment to the people. Oh, thank you, Michael.
switching gears a little bit. This is the Shining Light Video Podcast show where I shine a light on my guests and the positivity they're spreading in their communities. And Sue Serino always spreads positivity. <laughs> Whenever I've seen you, you're always smiling. You're always laughing. You're always speaking with somebody. And I know that you miss your community. I know that you miss shaking hands, hugging people, and speaking with people. But I know that there's also some positivity that comes out of this. So could you share with us your thoughts on what positive outcome that you see from the quarantine that we've all experienced, and even a little bit of light that we're starting to see today. Oh yeah, there was definitely, I would think a lot more kindness and respect that were, was going on between people. Uh, look at all of the different people I know in my own community, they were making the masks and uh, collecting them from all over. They weren't asking anybody for any money, uh, whether it was Southern Duchess here in Hyde Park, uh, Red Hook and Rhinebeck, making the little connections that made the mask a little tighter. And we were delivering, we took a collection because like I said earlier, I had a daycare. So I found out that the daycares needed items. So I collaborated with our county executive, Mark Molinaro, and we did a collection of all the items that they had given us and one of them was masks. So I called the people that my friends making the masks and I said, I need like a hundred masks and they made them for me. So it was great. And even for senior homes, uh, because I was chair of aging for four years and now I'm the ranker, People were asking us for the masks and we were delivering those too. And anytime I called, everybody uh, just said, yep, how many do you need? And they made them for us. And um, I think about like the Spanish church in the city of Poughkeepsie, they had reached out. They were uh, feeding 40 people to begin with. And then it grew to 250 people because they found, people found out about them. So we tried, we helped them raise awareness um, and got them some donations and stuff too. And I went there and it was, it was amazing how they had a system into play and really were helping a lot of people in the city of Poughkeepsie. They took over the old armory a few years back. Okay. Uh, yeah, so they did a great job. Um, there was a, the food do donations that I mentioned and a, a young woman that uh, in High Park School District took it upon herself to feed 100 families. So we, you know, we would connect, like, I guess we were like a connector. <laughs> we connected right, right. a lot of different people to donate. And we also heard from the interfaith community. They're all different faiths from throughout Dutchess County. They raised $40,000, I believe, and they gave out a thousand boxes of food and gift cards um, at the Galleria Mall just about a month ago, and they're going to do another one in City of Poughkeepsie and one in Beacon through the rest of the summer. So it was wow. great. Yeah. Everybody wow. Yeah. That. Yeah, just really, really great collaboration between yourself and all the different people in the area. And, and really, that's what I, I've learned a lot throughout this quarantine is just so many helping hands, so many people just wanting to be able to, to, to open up their homes and open up their doors. As you said, that person who just cooked a thousand meals for people yeah. and so many donations going on across the board. It really was a nice thing to see. And I, I really hope it carries on forward. I know uh, I have to mention, because she, she does such a great job, Janet from HBE. Eats. Her mission is to make sure that everybody in the Hudson Valley eats. So just so many tremendous things going on out there. From, from your perspective, um, sitting in, in a state Senate seat, what, what do you think is some of like the needs that people have? You know, we have all these people donating food and everything and all these food pantries and everything. What's, how can we really help outside of just these food pantries? Um, I, I don't necessarily know how to really tee up my question here, because while you were telling me about all of this, of all these different food donations, I'm wondering, I'm going, are, are we missing something? Is there something missing in our communities that maybe we should be fighting for or looking to promote? Well, you know, usually the Chambers of Commerce, like we have the Dutchess County Chamber of Commerce who does an excellent job. They've been in touch with the businesses. They actually let the businesses come onto their um, website and learn about the different things and uh, programs that were available to them. And they didn't even have to belong to the Chamber. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and also we have Dutchess Responds, you know, so this is things that were going on in Dutchess that people could find out about different areas where they would need help. There was a group uh, just last week, it's a, a group of young guys, uh, the Gen Z, and um, they're called the Label Foundation. And they're just a, a group of good friends who felt like they had wonderful opportunities in life and want to give back and help um, the youth thrive. So they did a sneaker and clothing donation last week in the city of Poughkeepsie. It was pretty amazing. And they brought in the uh, Poughkeepsie City uh, basketball team too from the school district. So it was great. These young guys just took this on themselves. They're from Beacon and they uh, raised money and it was great. 
Really? Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of support for these types of organizations. Yeah. This is the Shining Light video, video podcast show where I shine a light on my guests and the positivity they're spreading in their communities. I'm here with Senator Sue Serino, and we spoke a little bit about her past, about her upbringing, her childhood, and how she was a single mom and raised her child while as a business owner and then became a New York State Senator, showing us, proving to us that anything is possible if you really just go for your dreams. She's also very active in her communities. We actually just spoke a lot about what's going on in her community and in our community. But Senator Sue Serino, I would like to ask you, outside of all of these great, amazing things that you're witnessing, you are also part of Meals on Wheels, and you do so much with your, with your team in the community. Could you share with us any acts of kindness and generosity that you're witnessing today? Well, we have throughout the county Meals on Wheels and Hyde Park Meals on Wheels because this is my town where I live. So I, I go with them every year and we'll go and we'll deliver meals. And I know some of my real estate agents actually are volunteers for that. It's a great organization and it's a great way to check in on the seniors too, just to make sure that they're okay, that somebody has eyes on them because often they don't even, they don't have family members. So this is really important, but they're they're just a wonderful organization that has helped out tremendously. Um, and then there's yeah. just so many wonderful uh, programs that we have in our community. Yeah, and, and so, one other one that, that, you, that touches, is very close to home for you is also Lyme's disease. And you speak out a lot about Lyme's disease. Could yes. you share with us any updates as to what's going on there and what you're doing in those foundations? Yeah, we, you know, it's so important to raise money for Lyme disease because of the research. Uh, for the past, when I first got into the Senate, uh, we were able to raise, I think, four, you know, put in the budget $400,000. But then over the past few years, it was 600000 then it grew to a million. But the Kerry Institute did the Tick Project, and they, there was a Cohen Foundation that saw that we were taking an interest in actually putting money into the budget for research and development. So they donated $5 million towards that Tick Project, which is going to be coming to an end pretty soon. Um, you know, so that they can discover how can we uh, eradicate this problem? Because as you know, we're the epicenter. I just had a call from a girl the other day that her niece has Lyme disease. She wasn't diagnosed and she's having neurological problems. And that's why we spend a lot of time talking to the kids in the school districts too. Because I tell them that little, little dot, like a poppy seed, you have to go and tell an adult about it. But they, we were able to, uh, have a book that was made through the Department of Health for third graders. So it's in all, I think all of the schools now, uh, which is really important. And I always say education is the key to prevention. So we yeah. talk about ticks a lot. <laughs> that, and that's really great. I have a funny story to share with you. I'll share it real quick for you. Yeah. My, my little three-year-old daughter comes inside one day and we're about to get her ready for a shower. And my wife called me over screaming, Michael, Michael, come here, come here. And we put the flashlight over her head and she's got this little dot on her head. And we're, we got the flashlight, I go get the tweezers and we're like, oh my God, is it a tick, is it a tick? I pulled it off. It was actually a little piece of chocolate that somehow, <laughs> somehow she got in her hair. So thankfully it wasn't a tick. We were all yes. freaking out. But we, we are very aware of that. We have a lot of deer in, in the area and they carry them and it's very good to get educated on it. And it's, it's no, that's not a disease to mess with for sure. No, no. And we have to just keep the awareness up, especially now when you think about it, look at the families they are all staying home and the kids are playing out in the backyard. They really need to be doing a tick check um, every day. That's right. Yep, and we do. Well, this is the Shining Light Video Podcast Show. And before we wrap, I have to ask you, Senator Cicerino, I know you're a Hyde Park resident and you love your Hyde Park area. So this is going to be a tough question for you because you do get around all around Dutchess County, Ulster County, Columbia County, as you mentioned. What's one place that you can't wait to go back to now that this quarantine has ended? Or to somewhat extent, extent somewhat ended. Yeah, and that's tough because there's so many great places to go. But I can tell you, I miss naturalizations. Like those ha would happen every other month in our district. And they are great. People are so happy. Uh, it's a great ceremony. Our county clerk does a great job. Uh, but I patronize a lot of the different restaurants. You know, like right now we have Takeout Tuesdays, which is great. So I live in Hyde Park. And of course, Capola's is here. So we... Uh, we go to Capola's, but there's Hyde Park Brewery, Antonella's. There's a ton of places that we love to patronize. And it's so important to be given back to our local communities. And our restaurants are really, really suffered through this time. So we uh, made sure we patronized them the whole time. 
Yeah, they, they really are. I, I've had so many guests on the show that talk about all of the restaurants here in the Hudson Valley. We are just so fortunate, fortunate and blessed to have such great, great restaurants. It really is. It's like you could just spin a wheel and pick a restaurant off the wheel and you're, you're going to land in a great spot no matter where you go. We just, we just went through what, what I just noticed. So we talk about positive outcomes. The Ever Ready over in Hyde Park, they put a drive through in. Yes, that was great. I know I've used the uh, drive through In fact, the first day that they were allowed uh, dining outside, I had breakfast at the Ever Ready. My son started working there when he was 15 years old, and I worked for one of the owners. That was my first job um, at the Double O Donut Shop, it's the Civic Center now in the city of Poughkeepsie when I was 15. <laughs> wow, wow, so it all, it all comes around. And I always say they have the best milkshakes over there at the Ever Ready. That's my favorite yes. milkshake. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this has been the Shining Light Video Podcast show with my guest, Sue Serino. Sue, before we wrap up the show, I would like to throw the mic back to you. Any final thoughts, any last messages that you would like to share with everyone today? Um, I would just like to say thank you to everybody in the community, Michael. It's so great. I cover not only Dutchess, but I cover Putnam County, too. So I oh. have a large district, and uh, they're similar in many ways, and everybody has the same needs. But everybody, I have to say, stepped up to the plate and helped, you know, Office of Emergency Management, all our first responders, they did an amazing job in our community as a whole. And just to let people know, if they still need help, I will, you know, reach out to us. Sir. Can I say my office number on the? Oh, please, yeah. yeah it's 229-0106. Uh, and we really want to hear, hear from people if they do need help or know people that need help because we can be like the great connector. Um, and that's, that's our job, so. Yeah, and I, and I would certainly tell everybody out there as well is that you're, you're so accessible. I mean, just for me, just my own experience with you and your office and speaking with the people at your office, just so accessible, just reaching out, just having a great conversation. It, it took several weeks for us to be able to put this together due to scheduling. But what I, what I really liked is that you were just all about it. It was all about, all right, what are we doing for the community? Awesome, I'm in. And it was just trying to figure out the schedule. So really, really accessible. Definitely reach out to Senator Sue Serino's office if you have any questions, if you need any help with anything. She's, she's a great resource and is somebody who is there for the people and for the community. And I, and I know that because I've witnessed it. I've really seen that with you. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's such an honor and a privilege to be kicking off my very first day in July with you on the show. I don't know if you know this, if, if your office shared this with you, but I had put the show on pause. I put it on pause for several weeks and oh. before I was coming, yep. So before I was, I was, I was going to start the show back in July, I wasn't sure on a date or anything. And then your office contacted me and say, Hey, Senator Cicerino has July 1st. I was like, Oh my God, what a better, <laughs> what's the best timing, like amazing timing. So this was really, really cool to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. That's an honor for me, Michael. Thank you for everything you do. It's great seeing you. <laughs> uh, you're very welcome. Well, I want to thank everybody for watching today. I want to let you all know that I will be continuing the Shining Light Video Podcast show. I'm not doing it on a daily basis as I used to do. I'll be doing it on an ongoing basis when I have amazing guests like Steve Serino come on the show. I'd also like to thank our show sponsors, the Mindful Living Program. You can message at Matt Alfonso and the number one on Instagram and also HB Gold Rewards, one of the largest business Facebook networking groups in the Hudson Valley. You can visit hbgoldrewards.com to buy your $10 discount card. Enter promo code FCH and HP Gold Rewards will donate $8 to Forgotten Children of Hades fundraiser. I want to thank my guest, Senator Sue Serino, for coming on the show today and everyone out there as well. As always, stay happy and stay healthy. Bye, everyone. Bye, Sue. Bye-bye. <laughs>